Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. James. James. I'm going to do something we've never done before on this show. We've done 350 episodes of, of Ross Patterson Revolution, and we've never led with a revolutionary figure of the day. No. No, never. Not once. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. This one, this one hurts. This one hurts the soul, you know? Jay Giles from the Jay Giles Band. Oh, what? Dead. 71 years Dead. old. Yeah. Yeah. Dead. You, if you were a, a, a child, a youth in the 80s, right? Uh-huh. When you watched any form of like MTV that was going on or whatever, you know, was happening in the outside world with adults, you know, where you were like, oh, man, adults are partying. Like your dad's music dad's or something. Yeah. or aunts or uncles. Sure, you know? sure. The crazy aunt. Yeah. yeah. Me specifically, like, you know, I had um, aunts and uncles who were in college in the 80s, you know, when I was a kid. Sure. And you'd hear them pull up outside in their Trans Ams. Okay. Uh, you know, the Z-Tops. Yeah, I had that. They weren't in college, but yeah, I had that for yeah, sure. Yeah, and you're like, oh man. And it was always, you know, Angel is my centerfold. Okay. That was that was a massive, like, oh man, yeah, we're oh, partying. Okay. You know? Like I know the, it. The party's begun. I know it. And if you're thinking about real partying in this life, like in my life, right? I don't know the 70s. I don't know the 60s. I don't know any of that. I, you know, I was a kid right. in the 80s. Like I, that, that's what I know. I'm sure doing, you know, acid at Woodstock and all that stuff was a blast. Sure. Right? I have no doubt. I was probably born in the wrong era. Uh, 70s, brother. Come on now. Come on now. That's probably where I should have had my heyday. Like, yeah. late 60s. And then 70s, like that's probably when I should have been born, where it was just like, come on, dude, mustaches, long hair, right? Bad attitude, you know? Yeah. Devil may care attitude. Yeah. Ooh, who's that on my shoulder? It's the devil. Is there an angel on the other shoulder? No. no. You know why? Two devils. Because she's my centerfold. Oh. So when they would come in the house, you know, raging or whatever, smoking weed, uh, this this era, because it, it says he's 71 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Which makes me weep. That means a lot of these guys are going to start kicking it then yep. soon. And it's like, man, this was freeze frame, freeze frame, freeze frame. I mean, like all of those songs, it's your simple 80s tunes that everybody used to do blow to. Now these guys are dying. Right. And that makes me sad. That makes me sad. Because it that I think the eighties and nineties were probably the last time of like real partying without inhibition where nobody was gonna snitch on you. Video you. Exactly. Tape post you. you. Yeah. Post yeah. you. Hey, here we are doing this. Drag you. you. Exactly. So therefore you were able to live more freely where you were just like, uh, eh, nobody's gonna find out about this. Right. I can do a toot. Off of, you know, some stripper's I ass. I can call it a mad. toot. Yeah. You know, because that's the era that I'm, I'm in. I'm going to do some gator tails, brother. Right. I'm going to do some gator tails. Yeah. Off of, you know, somebody's dick just because I can. You betcha. Yeah. Now, you betcha. The fact that this that era is now coming to an end, these guys are dying, that makes me sad. Because I look back at, uh, I follow these guys, um, your father's America, I think is what they're called on uh and it's just like on Instagram. all dad band stuff. No, and... it's all dad shit that they Ugh. used to do in the 70s and 80s. And I love this. Same. So like I follow it and it's it's rad. And it's all like uh, commercials for like Panama City Beach. Come and party for, you know. Or uh, I'm sorry. Because it wasn't Panama City Beach back then. It was uh, Daytona. 
Daytona Beach spring break, you know? Oh, Daytona was the place. That was the place. And, like, I remember seeing pictures of, like, my aunts and uncles, uh, like, on the beach, but, like, driving on the beach, raging, where you were just like, oh, all right, cool. Like, I remember as a kid, like, MTV's on the background, you know? They had some MTV spring break, and it was like, we're live here from Daytona Beach. A lot of zinc oxide. Oh, yeah, just the strip. Strip down the nose. Different maybe colors. underneath the eyes. Yeah, 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 different fun teal. It was a fun peach. thing. Yeah. It was almost like an Ultimate Warrior type vibe that you were doing with, with the, the lotion. I never, got to, I never got to do that. I never got to enjoy that world. You can do it now. You're working on the hair. No, no, no. Know. I can, but here's the thing. It won't you, be. You can't go out and rage with, like, no. you can't go out and rage with kids. You can't Mm-mm. go out and do that other shit. Like, Gator Tails isn't cute anymore. Let me go through a couple of these. Sure. The Just songs? Centerfold. Sure. Love Stinks. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm thinking of, right? Yeah. yeah I'm going to say it. You're going to do a couple bars. Okay. Um, give it. Looking for love. Looking for a love. No. One Last Kiss. Yeah. Do you know any of these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were talking Love Stinks. Come Where back. did our love go? Freeze Frame. Angel is my centerfold. Like, you're good on that. You know what I'm saying? Those five, you're good. Right. Those you're are good. some anthems. Yeah. Jay Giles Band, you know it. It's summed up for you in a nice, tidy little package. Yep. It's Jay Giles Band book for dummies at this point. That's what I just gave you. What I'm telling you is this, though. It represents something so much bigger. And that represents cocaine. Freedom. Cocaine. Sure. Driving on the beach. Oh, cocaine yeah uh, obviously cocaine mm, um, in between everything yeah gotta stay up gotta gotta be up yeah uh, gotta be ready partying on the beach mm-hmm. driving on the beach doing cocaine doing and then the driving beach. on the beach sure yeah i think i'm getting it drinking yeah. on the beach mm-hmm. then doing cocaine Co- on the yep. beach obviously yep I, so I'm getting it yep. um not yep. really yep. Not really sure what you're missing here about that. You any of miss this. the fact that back in the day, I, I miss that era. I miss an coke. era that I wasn't a part of. Mm-hmm. Like I feel nostalgic for an era that I wasn't a part of. But now I feel bad for that generation because if sure. Jay if Jay Giles goes, you right. know who's next? Falco's art. We already lost Falco. Right. Rock me Amadeus. We lost sure. him years ago in a car accident in Germany. Yeah. I'm still having a hard time with that one. Right. Mm-hmm. If we're losing Jay Giles, who's next? Who is next? Who's the guy that uh, you know we see in Californication? The guy we see in Californication, musician or Jenny eight six seven five three zero nine. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Rick Springfield. Springfield's Come on, Jesse. Gotta go next. Yeah. I don't know he's keeping it right and tight he looks he looks great but he's it's coloring up again he's still ripped he's that's still that's the, these are the guys it. that are next to go mm-hmm. where you're just like you're gonna start ticking the boxes here and you know something happens to catch a goo goo like i'm gonna be i'm gonna be real pissed off about it it's really gonna f up my day james yeah that's what i'm telling nostalgic you nostalgic for those coke days huh that i wasn't a part of right is that weird yeah that i wasn't a part mm-hmm. of Because, like, I remember, you know, obviously I was in a fraternity and shit like that. Like, I remember, like, guys from the 80s coming back to the fraternity saying, man, you don't know what it was like. And I was like, you know what, man? Why don't you fucking have a beer and tell me what it was like? Why don't you sit down? Treat me like a Santa. You know? Sit down on my lap and tell me what it was like in the 80s. I had this guy just unleash these stories about what it was like in the 80s. Every story led with, man, so we're doing cocaine. Right. And then boom, you know, that right. this happened, uh, you know, fucking I punched out a window, that type of thing. We were just like, ah, God damn it, man. I bet those gator tails were huge, brother. Were you ever at a tail end of anything? Like by the time I was going to a party where Coke would yeah. be presented, it was already dirty. And it was like it was like the smoking of today. Yeah. You so know, where it's like, oh, you are exactly. But and, I'll take a little bit. But you're you feel dirty about and it. And look, our our house got thrown off of campus. Um, the the I, I would say sixty days after I was there, it was a huge it was a huge uh, cover story in Rolling Stone about this party we threw. There was probably two three pounds of coke there. You know, um, right, not not of it, my what, choosing. Yeah, but it but was, it was at a house next door. Right. So it was at somebody's house next door. They were a member of the fraternity, whatever. Right. It wasn't in the house directly. 
the guy wrote about everything. It, it was what it was. But you were right. Like, the Coke was dirty, stepped on. No, it was dirty to do it. So before us, it was like, it was almost like passing a joint. It was yeah, like, Coke, yeah, 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 you yeah. have the, exactly. the mirrors yep. out no, no. at the party with adults. Yeah. No. Right? And yeah. it wasn't like a dirty go into the bathroom thing. 100%. Um, and so by the time, You're I'm right. sure we both came along to yeah. the, the point past 16 where people are starting to like bust it out. It's very dirty, secret. You're gross if you do it, but give me a little bump, a little right? teaser. Yeah, give me a little gummy to, to so, get yeah, through the day. So yeah, we never but... had we never had those those no. freewheeling, passing the mirror nope. around. I, I boy, I like I'm gonna make you feel real gross here. If, if we're gonna get into it. Let's get into it. There was even parties because people were fearful of shit. A lot of people were fearful of shit that they would take black, uh, you know, trash bags. You know, those like yeah. 80 gallon ones or whatever the, mm -hmm. the fuck it is for the huge trash cans. Sure. Cut those in half with a box cutter and then duct tape them around the window so you couldn't see inside. Right. And That's how that dirty it gets, was. Yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you don't know what time yeah. it is. Sure. It's it's consistently black and wherever you are and you're just like, eh, uh -uh. this fucking blows. The one time, though, that I did go to something like that where it was bulls on parade of like, hey, the, the exact cool. the exact party you're talking about. And I'm telling you, like, dude, this is why we love gay people, man. Um, th oh, they yes. throw the best parties. So yeah. we showed up. There was a buddy of mine uh, who was looking to get some pills, I think. Uh, you know, ecstasy was huge back in the day. And him and his girlfriend were going somewhere or whatever, right? But we were on the way downtown to some bar. And he was like, hey, do you mind if we stop? I was like, yeah, no worries. So we stopped and, like, walked in this gay dude's house. He had a fucking full uh, Star Trek Enterprise Coke dish beautiful that was on so all the coke was was divvied up on top of the starship sure. enterprise sure. and he was just walking around the party like it was a tray of you know champagne like like it was just champagne glasses of like oh hey cool and for the first time i was just like oh man uh and i didn't know him obviously and he didn't know me and we locked eyes for a second and he was like oh man is this guy fucking cool like Right. And I looked at him and I, you know, I gave him the nod and like the, sure. hey man, I'm proud of you. Like, this is mm. amazing. And uh, that was the last time I had seen it like freely at a, at a party where everybody was just like, oh, hey, no big deal. Right. No big deal. Mm. Uh, there was some other parties in the, in the hills in Hollywood later, but like, then you're starting to get into some designer shit. Like, like that was the strawberry cocaine era where it was just like, oh, hey, cool. And then, you know, it was the, like the inventor of the pacemaker's house. And you sure. go up there and it's all celebrities and you walk outside. And, he can party that guy, huh? You know, but you know what I'm saying. You like you remember those where it's just like, hey, there's an after hours in the hills. Dr. Atkins, you right? You show up and there's like two armed security guards and you're like, wait, at a house party? What's going on in there? Oh, it's cocaine. Um, so people didn't care there, but you couldn't take photos or, you, you know, there was so many rules to it where you were just like, eh. No, thanks. I'd rather go. Yeah. It's like, dude, don't, don't give me fucking rules for cocaine. Yeah. Don't, I don't. I'll go to the rustic. I'll make my own rules. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Nobody tells me not to be dirty. How odd would it be if you just rolled into, let's say the rustic right now, right? Let's say it. Do they have a jukebox? Yes. Yes. Let's say you went in, popped in a dollar, probably got three songs. Sure. Put on all, uh, all three famous <laughs> Jay Giles band songs, right? You, right. And then sat down, ordered a G&T, maybe a white Russian. Yep. And then just yep. dumped out a bag of Coke mm -hmm. uh, and just ripped down a fat gator tail, some booger sugar, right? Yeah. What, what do you think the looks would be like at that place? Because you worked there for a while. Yeah, no bigs. Right? Yeah, no bigs. You think people would come up uh, and say, hey, can I get what a... Time, yeah, mind if and I grab what a time of that? day and who was working, uh, if the owner, who's not really around that much anyways... Mm -hmm was not in there and it was like a two or three or in the afternooner. Ah. Um, you've got the right gals behind the bar. You've got the right people in there. Ooh, it could be super fun if you did exactly that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the place. That would be the place for sure. And they'd be fine with it. Man. You'd might get a little bit like, hey, like just Put it to the side a little bit or some, something like this. Yeah. But no, you wouldn't be, the, the looks would not be um, anything. Fuck, anything bad. brother. Wouldn't, yeah, and that's why I do bring up the rustic every once in a while because there is these, 
And there's a couple places in um, Ojai Ventura, the hut, the hub, that have, have kept the old school, that vibe right, right. alive that you do feel like mm. you're not going to do it. But I like feeling like I could. Same. Right? But I would never. And I'm not just saying that. I would never. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I like feeling like, hey, I could, I could probably do that. Yeah. And I was like, I'm the same way because I'm not a big Coke guy. No. But you like the option. You like to have the option there of like, hey, man, you never know how fucking crazy you're going to get one night. Yes. You might want to steamroll into something. I like a no judgment zone. Yeah. A no phone zone. A no, you know. You know, the weirdest thing is like I haven't seen because we've lived in, you know, North Carolina for a while now. And obviously I travel a lot. Um, you've brought that up many times. <laughs> and the, the, the strangest thing about it is, especially about Coke in particular, when I went back to L.A., when we went back for this last show, it was the first time I, I'd seen it in any of these trips yep. across America. It was so strange. And but it was the first thing that somebody brought out that I was just like, oh, all right. And part of that put me at ease where I was just like, well, this still exists someplace. But it's, of course, in L.A. Like uh, In I just... L.A., and it was exactly, it brought me back to exactly how it has always been there. And right. I thought, wow. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? That feeling, everything of like. Yeah, before I left L.A., that's how it was. Sure. No matter what, any party, whatever, anytime you're even going anywhere. Yeah. It's happening in the bathroom. It's happening before you go, blah, blah, blah. So, again, I didn't work too well in those circles. Sure. Because, you know, you know, mom can't stay up really past. I mean, midnight is huge. Mm. So when you're dancing dance party till five yeah. in the morning, that's going to be an issue for me. Yeah, it's too tough. It's too tough anymore. But again, I like the option. And, yes. I, and I, I long for an era that I was never part of, Javes. So I R like R to R be P. thought J. of. I, li I like to be thought of as the prude, right? Because I'm not. Yeah. So I like to go to a place where I'm the like Crazy responsible one, yeah. one right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is like. You flip it. You flip it. Yeah, which is hard to find in normal life. So I like to go to these, the sea witch, rustic, places like this where I can go, I'm doing good. Yeah. Right? Guys, right? Yeah. Makes me feel good. Sea witch is for sale, by the way. It is. Yeah. How much? Two and a half million. Two and a half million dollars for the sea witch. Prime if you're, if real you're, if you're estate. Not, if you're not, it is, man. If you own that place, congratulations. And that parking lot? Fuck. Uh, we'll if, if, if you're not familiar condos. with the Sea Witch, it's uh, it's a it's a party destination in Carolina Beach. It's great. Um, you know, sand on the floor. Yeah, because it's um, I mean, a it's, shag band playing every it, night. It is maybe 30, 40 yards from the beach. So yeah, you come off the beach, you roll into it's the amazing. bar any time of day. You can have a drink outside, inside, uh, cover bands every night, like that type of jam where you're like, ah, the there's probably a lot of coke if, there. If it rains, you can't go, which I love. Right. Yeah, yeah. Everything is outdoor. I mean, they've covered the bar areas. Yeah. But that, big, big you know, fan of the sea witch, big fan of the sea. 2.5 is what they want for that, man. If you were like, I always picture somebody you like smart, you guys, like the guy from bloodline, you know, the brother on bloodline. Yes, like, that's I could what see it, him owning oh, a place like that. That's what it like, makes hey, me feel like you guys. Yeah. It makes you feel like those. a bar on bloodline. If you've ever watched that show on Netflix. Dude, I want to go Great. out tonight, dude. What do you think? I, I'm, I'm in. I want to go. It's the last day before this fucking whatever storm. I mean, <laughs> I want to be sweaty, drink. Yeah, get your shoes off a little bit. Sure, feet in the sand spring inside break. a bar. I, I find it odd that Jay Giles died during spring break. Um, but and whatever. it was natural causes, ah, or, or do we yeah, know? Yeah, natural oh, causes. Okay. Natural he was, causes uh, he was from 71. Coke. Yeah. Probably long term coke use, whatever. <laughs> Naturally man. dying of coke. Yeah. No judgment yeah. here, man. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, this no is, this judgment. Is planet, this is planet Fitness over here is a judgment free zone mm -hmm. uh, for Jay Giles. Mm -hmm. Whatever he had to do to make the people dance, I don't care. Don't care. Sure, sure. Uh, sure. We're going we're gonna to switch into today's uh, music world, though. Uh, B B current. Beyonce. Mm. Beyonce. The Beychella. The Bayhive. Um, we watched that. So she drops in uh, a movie on Netflix at midnight last night. Live album, Midnight at Last Night. Mm -hmm. And we watched the documentary. It was about two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, That's how long she played, huh? 
No, because I mean, it, it was inter- it, it was like, intercut with the yeah. documentary. She probably played two. She probably yeah, played two I hours mean, easily. She gave the people. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I was skeptical because everybody loves her so much on you know Twitter and social media and all that shit, and they're like, "Oh my god, this is everything. This is my life." And, and you this is sort great. of feel like, "Oh, she can't do anything wrong in their eyes." So let's really see from someone that me personally, I like her. Yeah, I don't die for her. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think she's very talented and an amazing performer, and has really been working hard at it for years. Sure. But I don't like. There are some things that she does that I can step back and and not like. And say, yeah. all right, cool. Like the last album. No, so much the last I don't album like with that. her and Jay Z. Sure. I, I wasn't crazy about. Didn't love it. And it was what it was. That music video was awesome. I could say the that. first one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But go ahead. That was great. Um, but th- this documentary was lights out. And dude, that performance that she put on Coachella because we weren't there last year. Uh, I don't. I. It's hard for me because I don't have a, and we've talked about this many times, I don't have a real desire to see pop stars. Uh, Ariana Grande headlined this year. Beyonce was last year. They, they, she made a big deal about being the first uh, female black singer to, to headline Coachella and that it was a big moment, a special moment. First of all, Coachella hasn't been going on that long. Right. One, two, it used to be a rock festival. So it yeah. wasn't. An indie. It, was, it used to be yeah, indie. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. People, indie bands. The people headlining were like what? Radiohead. Well, I mean, Radiohead was like the biggest thing. Once Radiohead started playing there is when it like came up. But back, back in the day, it was, I mean, Mumford and Son was like. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was the big deal. I think, uh, um, God, who was it? Um, shit. Skinny Love. Bony Vare. He Bony had, Vare. He headlined one year for Christ's sake. So like. Right. That's so the type of vibe of it was. So that kind of stuff. To hang your hat on that. It's kind of weird to me where it's just like, hey, man, all of this pop star shit just kind of started. Like, yeah. Eh. So like because let, yeah. let, let's face it. I think Kanye played what four or five years ago. Right. And Jay-Z that was... headlines two years ago. Like we've had black performers headline for many years. So sure. Female wise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think R- Rihanna, you know, had, had been asked before or something. So I, I don't know. I'm not going to put a lot of stock in that. I will say this, Beyonce, you're probably the greatest live performer on the planet right now you know i I would say it's 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 her and lady gaga but i'd probably give the advantage to beyonce just based on the choreography and the dancers and all that shit um i think hits and music wise musically talented i would give it to lady gaga yes performance wise i would have to give it to beyonce Beyonce and pop hits that are around the world like beyonce's got a million of those yeah because she brought out destiny's child and all that shit um which was hilarious by the way what's with the third one what's her name michelle uh, the hashtag is poor michelle is that it's just is that poor real michelle oh, yeah man. singing wise dancing wise she just was never quite up to par and <laughs> i don't want to say too much more only because she has some mental issues and suicidal things and all of this but she, she hashtag, looks like it yeah the hashtag was always poor michelle and there's these videos of She's basically the other one. Yeah. She's late always on the dance move. She's late on the dance. I mean, yep. the singing, there's all these moments of, oh. Is that a thing online that I, I don't know about? Because I'm, I'm not a big Poor Destiny's Michelle, Child. Yeah. Uh, it is. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not a big Destiny's Child fan, so I know Kelly Rowland. I, you're right. I didn't know the third one. Um, the other one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, you, it's when strange. you see them together, you go, yeah. She had to she had to break off because I mean just the <laughs> difference of Beyonce and both of them is Kelly you have Rowland to just is dope and, and is hot. Great. I don't understand what happened and with her. She's great yeah. to, you know, give her some some lines and some dance moves, yeah. but she is in no way up to Beyonce's level. And this is a, a moment Kelly I Rowland? don't Yes, and okay. I don't say this often where you're like, you had to leave them behind because I do hate that concept, but she kind of had to. And I love that she brings them up and, and all of this kind of... It's like Justin Timberlake. Yeah. He had to go, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. had to move on. He had to leave them behind, right? If he yeah. wanted to do all these... So, and the other thing I was going to say about Beyonce is she, from top to bottom, looks like she has complete control over the entire performance. And so in that way, I have to say, 
insanely talented. She's a boss ass. She doesn't bitch, have man. some other person yeah, behind her that's 100%. like doing the whole thing, and then she kind of goes, "Okay, I think she came up with the concept. She comes up with the ideas. She, I mean." It's funny when it looks I, when, like she's in the room of the auditions and the stage. When I looked at the when we watched the Lady Gaga doc, it was the same, same. thing where she does the same and thing. So, and it's a lot of control. And like you, you like that, and you understand why these artists are so successful and powerful and and um, thought of as bitches sometimes because she has to be like, no, be. this is what I want. That, that, that and is the some only guy way. Is going to come up and go, you know, I think we should kind of. And she has to probably every day reassert herself and be like, no, this is what I want, and this is how I want it. It's going to be your job to figure it out. And that's a bitchy move, right? But I think it works both ways because guys have to do that too. And it's like, you know, oh, yeah. and then you're considered an asshole. Like famously Mike Myers, right? Everybody. Like, everybody. All, all but this. he's, he's kind of a famous one that he's a dick. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I was a dick because I wanted what I wanted. Yeah. And these people, I wasn't up to a level that people would just listen to me. So I had to keep saying it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and I don't know. But yeah. No, it was uh, it was interesting to see. I get the hype behind it. it. It was a great doc all the way around, and the performance was cr- lights out. So Beyonce deserves all the success she she has. Uh, Ka- look, the thing about the Kelly Rowland thing when you were like, "Well, she's not Beyonce." No one is. No one's Beyonce. I th- I, th- I still think she could have had a pretty decent career. Music is one of those she things. She could have, but she didn't want. I mean, well, mu- music want- is one of those things that uh, it's so strange how it connects with. Certain songs or certain albums connect with a lot of people. Certain songs and albums don't. Uh, now, the weird one, she, she looks crazy. So when you said that, she looks, you know, I don't know. She looks like she's about 80 pounds. Yeah. Uh, she's going, she looks about 30 years older than them. Right. It's weird, man. Uh, the Michelle one. And uh, I understand that one. Maybe not the Kelly Rowan one so much. But uh, t- to go back to your point about the, the, the people who need to leave the bands, uh, I, I always think about that Harry Styles kid. Yeah, that's when he left. Right. I, I said to myself, I was like, oh, man. Yeah, he had to he had to leave. He's he's rad. It, his first album didn't work out that great for him. And that song he dropped as the single, his first single, uh, Sign of the Times, mm-hmm. to me, is one of the greatest songs of all time. I love and, it. Um, I'm surprised he's now that when didn't you bring get up massive. Yeah. But, you know, like like a Justin Timberlake overnight. I remember when Justin Timberlake dropped that album. He was the f- most famous person on the planet overnight Absolutely. after that. Absolutely. Now, the thing with the Harry Styles, I think those One Direction boys, each one of them are very talented and they have shown by breaking off themselves. Right. There's a couple that are... Zane. Yeah, but there's a couple that are the, the little weak links. Mm-hmm. But I do think that was a case of they did do really well together. And I think they're doing stuff together again or whatever. But um, I like that he broke off. I don't know if I was like, yeah. I think his look, his whole vibe, I connected with more. But I, I, I don't think talent-wise I was like, he's got to shine. Which one? Styles. Really? No. I mean, I thought that as I a, do. He looks like a young Mick Jagger to me. He does. And look-wise in his, you know... His voice is amazing. Acting. We saw him on Center Live. Like yeah. he crushed it. Go but look up. All, hey, one, but One Direction. You know, they're all. Yeah, they're all pretty good. I yeah, have yeah, to they, say, they are. They are pretty. By good. the way, they but yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Go pop on a pop on a live live performance of uh, Harry Styles. Sign of the Times. We're look. We're 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 on YouTube. We're live on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, and if you're if you're on after the show, pop on a Harry Styles live performance. Pop, pop, pop it on. Pop it on. Pop, pop it on. See we what can't you think. put it at the end. Put just put no, we can't. Put Sign but of the Times can. on uh by Harry Styles live on YouTube after you subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Ross Patterson Revolution, and then get tell us your thoughts. Comment on it. Let yeah. us know. Yeah. Um I, one of the things that's made me happy this week, like beyond happy. I'm a a lot of people don't know this. I'm a I'm a both of us are huge Jeopardy fans. Yes. Monster. Like, yes. I'll sit down and watch whatever and then just rip off answers. Pretty good at Jeopardy. Sure. I enjoy playing Jeopardy. If there is, if I sit down with somebody and Jeopardy's on and they can't get one of the questions right, I immediately look at them like they're a dummy. Mm. Hey, hey, dummy. Hey, dummy. Mm. That's what I look at them like. That's fun. Um, so I remember Ken Jennings absolutely destroying the world, setting all those records. 
And I was like, man, that guy is the Joe DiMaggio. He's got a he's got a winning streak, a hitting streak that will never be broken. Sure. This week, this guy is absolutely crushing dicks. Absolutely crushing dicks. He set so this week alone, twice, twice, he's broken the all time single show record. And last night, he had a perfect game. He had a perfect Jeopardy game. And what does that mean? He got every 40 single? 40 for 40 he was last night. He didn't get all, he didn't get all of them because people buzzed in before Okay, him. and they Let's answered to, yeah. 40 for 40. He did not miss. Uh, you ready for this total, his final total last night? The, you will not believe it. What? Take a, take a stab at what his final total was. 50. Right? That would be a high number. That's exactly what I was thinking. Totally. I was like, oh, man, if you, if you finished with $50,000 or $60,000 on Jeopardy. You're, like, stoked. You're that's, the That's man, the highest yeah. total I can remember, I think. You yeah. know, I thought. Um, this guy last night finished with $131,000. His final Jeopardy, he bet $60,000 just in the, on the final Jeopardy question alone. Drop, Jeez. drop 60. Yeah. So oh. now do you let someone like this just, I mean, do you cut them off at some point or you, you just, no, it's great for the show. Okay. To just keep the same person. Yeah. Cause like going. Ken Jennings, like I remember, you know, they always wheel him out once a year for the tournament of champions and all this other shit. Right. Do you um, mean wheel out? Cause he's older. No. Nah, Cause he's just always, he's the guy from jeopardy. Okay. Like, he, you know, he became so Famous from that of yeah. winning, what was it, 74 games in a row or something that like that? That he does a bunch of stuff. He, every yeah. year he comes back. I remember they did the uh, the Big Blue Challenge where he went up against the, the IBM computer. and Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it was like, can you beat the robot or whatever? And uh, I think the robot crushed them. And I think he, maybe he came back and won again. Like, uh, he's just that dude, right? So now you're going to add this guy. I'm going to say who it is. His name is James Holtzhauer. Um, the reason why I'm going to say it is... He's a, a professional sports gambler in Vegas. All the casinos know him. He's a, he's, a, he's a gambler. That's what he does for a living. That's what he's always done for a living. Then he gets on Jeopardy. Uh, he won his 10th straight last night when I was watching this fucking thing. You, are you ready for this 10-day total? This 10-day total will shock your mind. Okay. 697000 $787 in 10 days. That's an average per show of $69,000 a show. In 10 shows. Jeez. I mean, is that crazy? He's already second of all time already in 10 shows behind Ken Jennings. Uh, Jennings won. Okay, so here, Ken Jennings won. I was right. He won more than $2.5 million, um, 74 game winning streak. That was what his total was. Um, and this this, this whole tower guy is on pace to surpass Jennings uh, in, in 36 games, winning total wise, if he keeps it going. If he keeps it going. But I mean, with that kind of fucking. And then what's the thing? Do they make him harder then? Or... Can't. No. Who else is going to play against him? So last night he went 40 for 40, didn't miss one, went into final jeopardy with $71,000, and then bet 60 because. He was so like far ahead of the other. That, yeah, the other like, people had the, the other two people on the show last night had five thousand dollars a piece. That they they finished with, and they were to their credit, they were laughing on the show and just being like, "Man, I don't know what's going you on." You have but to. You have to. This is hilarious, and um, you know, I, look, it's not as if the final question last night was easy either. What was? I'll it? read it to you. Final final uh, category was twentieth century literary characters. Okay. And the answer is, his first name refers to the ancient district in which you'd find the Greek capital. His surname is a bird. Cha-cha. I'm not going to keep going with that. Yeah, James, no. but I didn't know it. And, and like, I, I, like, I have no problem admitting that. Sure. What, no, what? no fucking idea what this was. It was Atticus Finch. Oh, Jesus. Did you know it? No, but. Yeah, I didn't know it. Uh, he did. Threw another 60 on the Barbie. Of course he did. So this guy's 34 years old. He's a professional gambler. Um, and he's, uh, apparently, he's really fucking good. All the casinos know him. And Alex keeps kind of probing him, you know, now that they've been on the show. And they were like, well, what are they going to think of this? And he was just like, man, truthfully, it's not good for me. 
Like, right. Cause he was asking about the fame and he goes, that's, that's one thing you don't want in the sports world is fame. And he goes, I, you know, I'm here because I love jeopardy and all that other stuff. But like, he goes, I don't know if they're going to allow me to bet anymore. Why? The thing is, if you get too good, they don't let, they don't like, they don't let you keep gambling. Like if you're great at it and you're just keep winning money all the time, you're going to tell me you're going to let a guy who went 40 for 40 on jeopardy and broke all the, you know, is, is about to break all the all time records. Hey man, I want this guy in here gambling on, on every game there is. Fuck no. True. I mean, that would be crazy. But stopping him on what grounds? They, well, here's the thing. So like Floyd Mayweather, right? Because I was trying to think about this as well. It was like, man, has anybody ever been stopped before? Yes, they have. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, they will only allow him to bet certain amounts at one casino. He tried to go in, I guess, allegedly a, a few years ago. Put $5 million, I think, on the Super Bowl. And they were like, no, we're not doing that. And so he had to go send people to bet like a million here, 800,000 there, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I remember one time we went collectively to Vegas and tried to bet on the Yankees uh, during the Jeter era. Mm -hmm. And all of us went in on it. It was one of those things where it was just like they were playing the Orioles and and the Orioles were terrible. And uh, I think, God damn, it was, man, I, I don't think it was Randy Johnson. I forget who was pitching for, uh, maybe it was Boomer. It might, it might have been Wells, um, who who was pitching for for the Yankees. Whatever. Okay. We all went in and said, "Hey, we want we want because uh, there's a bunch of us, huge group of us. We want ten thousand dollars on the Yankees, right? Mm-hmm. Um, each of us, I think, we're putting in like uh, maybe five or six hundred bucks or whatever, right? Holy crap! Yeah, and they said no. They said no, you can't do it. They said we're on, we're only taking a thousand today on the Yankees, and I was like, what? So we had to go around to other casinos and make this fucking bet happen. Man. Vegas really does know what they're doing. Huh? Yeah. So uh, Yankees were favored heavily, obviously. They had, right. a great, they had a great team. But the way to beat that spread, and by the way, the reason I know this, if you want to flip on over to Drink and Bro Sports, I host a sports podcast on there every Wednesdays, and we go through the spreads every week, and it's become a big thing. Um, I know a lot about gambling. So uh, what I said was to all my friends, because they were like, look, we're looking for something to pay for a cabana. Uh, for, for the weekend, you know, free booze and all that stuff. Those outdoor parties and then dinners, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like we were trying to buy a fucking car or, you know, do mm-hmm. something crazy with the money. More or less just looking to pay for the entire weekend and really blow it out, right? right. So everybody looked to me and was just like, who do we bet on? I was like, the Yankees. Bet on the Yankees, Orioles game. Uh, this, is, this is an easy one for me. But the Yankees were favored so heavily, the only way you could knock down those odds was to take the run line. Well, the run line means you had to win by two runs or more. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was all in. I was like, great. I'll, I'll take that fucking run line every day. Yankees are going to smash them. Right. Roll up. Try to bet 10 grand. They said no. Now, what we'll ended up happening with that game? So we went around to four different casinos, finally got these bets laid. Um, but the problem was, by the time we hopped around, because you know as well as I do, you've lived there for a little bit. The casinos look a lot closer than they are, and they're not when you're walking. And you're like, fuck, to hop in a cab to go to all this shit, we didn't think made sense at the time. So we were running out of time. Right. Um, I think we were only able to hit five. And, and shockingly, this, this guy had called the other casinos and said, look out for these guys. So we could only lay down five grand. So we bet a grand at each casino. Sure. And uh, Yankees won 9-6, covered by one run. On the run line. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I, I, obviously, the, the bookies knew what they were doing by only limiting us to that. Oh, yeah. So we did win $5,000, but we couldn't get to the other places fast enough in time to bet it. So it was just like, eh, whatever, man. We, we, we blew it out, got a cabana that night. Nice. That was all paid for. I think <laughs> I think it was 30, 3800 and then we left the waitress 1200 bucks for the night. Nice. Yeah, but it was like 10 of us. So... Right. Um, you know, 10, 15, whatever it was. I forget, I forget what right. the circumstance was. Maybe like a bachelor party or something. But uh, I want to say 2004 or five. that's what it was. And I was like, shit. With this guy, good luck, brother, going back there. There's no way they're going to let him bet on shit. Dude. Yeah. Crazy, right? Um, so I, when I saw that, I was like, ooh. Buddy, 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 you're going to have a tough time. I know. You're making yourself a little bit too visible. You're going to have a, a rough go at it. Visible. Um, speaking of making yourself visible, Brad A. Stanellis making himself visible again. He's got a new book out. This one's nonfiction, Jabes. Mm-hmm. It's just called White. Mm-hmm. Do you know about this? Yes. You do? 
I do. What's uh, I think the only person that can really do it is him, right? Is him. I, I he's one of my favorite writers. How about you? Yes. Yeah, I, I he's just fantastic. Has been for years. Yeah. Um, not only do I like him as a writer, but I like him as a personality, and he's just cool. Like, look, there's very few writers that you meet that are cool where you're like, all right, man, that guy's fucking cool. Just cool. I'm, dude. I know one that's really cool, you know, where I'm just like, man, you're really fucking cool. Yeah. I want to rage with you. Right. You know, most of the time they are not like that. Even if you love Never. their books, yeah. you see them or meet them and you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. So you're just, this is all from your head. Yeah. 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 Like um, I, I remember bumping into literally ran running smack dab into uh, Stephen King on a plane. Right. Um, I turned to get a my bag out of the overhead and uh, boom, dick to dick Stephen King, man. Sure. Him, right. And he looks like he had like Boo Radley, like he'd been hiding in a closet somewhere or whatever. And he's the probably the greatest author of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. He looks how I want him to look, though, for the yeah, things yeah, yeah. that he writes. Absolutely. Um, But, you know, things like. Whatever. If people write cool stuff that you like and they just seem so awesome, they probably aren't. But there's the, a couple. But that the problem are. is with with uh, with Homeboy um, when he goes and does interviews, uh, they're weird. Stephen King's interviews are weird, and it's oh, and it's yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. and it's like, all right, I don't really care about your political opinion or whatever you're going to say about this because it's it, he sounds he's, he's just a uh, you know. Yeah, weird he's guy. just a weird guy. Where's Brett Easton in a room and like, fucking, yeah. that's, a, that's a dude you're having a J with, probably a Heineken, you know? Um, talk about Coke, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. talk about a lot of Coke. Uh, three in the afternoon mm -hmm. on, a, on a Tuesday in L.A. where you're just like, oh, man, you're not working? Of course you're not. You're too, you're too cool. You're rich and you're, you write dope shit. You, you know, you live by your own rules. He's got yes. his own podcast. I believe it's behind a paywall. Yeah, he doesn't. And again, he does things. He doesn't. The way he doesn't do it for money he, either. He just no. does it because of the exclusivity of it. Of like, hey man, if you want in on this, yep. you can pay. You know, and it, he doesn't need the money. Nope. Um. So he writes this book, first nonfiction, and it's about the freak out society that has happened since Trump won the election, mm -hmm. and how everybody's freaking out, and everybody just needs to chill the fuck out. Uh. I don't know if he's a secret Trump guy because he's made a lot of pro Trump comments and mm -hmm. things like that. Like, uh, I, I know Patrick Bateman's, you know, character in, in American Psycho was in love with Trump and Trump Tower and all that stuff. And uh, it's weird that, you know, I, I, there was an interview with um, Brett Easton Ellis where he was like, man, I, if, you were, if you weren't asking me my honest opinion about Trump, I thought he would have went away in the 90s, you know, because mm -hmm. I knew him in the 80s. And, right. You know, he said the same thing pretty much everybody says. Fun dude, loved being Trump, and you know, whatever. And like, in that, and when I met him, I felt same thing. Sure, fun sure. dude. Like, you know, reminds me of a father. It's Father Son Weekend at a, at a college campus who's having a good time. You mm -hmm. know, nothing wrong with him. Mm -hmm. See, he writes this book, and everybody's freaking out about this book. But that's probably the one guy that can get away with his shit. Get away with it, and has always written about the. The elitist, rich world. This world that he was a part of, is a part of. You know, this underground, right. rich, untouchable thing, right? He used to, like, run with the Rat Pack. Like, oh, yeah. He has always been and wanted to be rich and famous and, you know, famously, do, you know, does a bunch of drugs and just crazy parties where you don't have to. I didn't know he was gay, by the way. Yeah. I mean, he, he kind he of alluded it. to. Oh, he, he came out and said it in this yeah, article. Yeah, yeah. But he's about always his, sort He was talking of... about his boyfriend in this article I read, this right. last one. But he's, he's always sort of been that kind of pansexual, like, just down for whatever. Yeah. So I think he's always just been down for whatever. I guess he has a boyfriend now or whatever, whatever but he's. He is that guy. If it, there's a party, a hole is a hole. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, why not? So, um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to really read his perspective on all of this shit. He doesn't, he doesn't love it. He's not a hippie. He is not a socialist. The opposite of. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it'd be interesting Very to see. Very smart guy, well-spoken, funny acerbic like I, I like him a lot he gives me hope 
writing wise because for years it's always been told to me through various other writers of like hey man once you get hot and start writing like you've got about 10 years before it runs out whatever it Mm -hmm. is you know um which i never believed i never i never put any stock in that whatsoever i believe if you stay current you keep your mind right and and stay fresh on 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 events every day and all this other stuff like uh you have the power to keep going forever it's the people that drop off the the map of society or whatever i mean stephen king's been writing books for fucking years and brilliant shit and so is brett easton ellis brett easton ellis writes more in my style of like cool mm-hmm. pop culture mm-hmm. like you know funny that type of thing so that that gives me hope with him where I'm yeah. like, uh, he right, uses cool. he usually uses characters to be controversial so i guess this will be the and it always feels semi autobiographical there's been a couple books where you're like right is this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so this will be the first time i think that you'll actually be able to hear hopefully hear all the controversial things through him and have that veil be lifted of these characters that he's been writing through right that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of his. I'm, I, I can't wait to check this book out. Uh, I'm excited about it, but uh, it's it's interesting because again, I think he's the only person who could tackle something like this in today's society mm-hmm. and not get shit on. If this was somebody from the far right, then you'd be like, uh, I think beef he off. will get. If it was somebody from the far left, you'd say beef off. Yeah, I think he will get shit on, but I think he doesn't care. And then the people that will love it will love it. Yeah, and that's always been his thing. Is like. He, in this weird way, has created his own weird, brand untouchable cool. brand that almost needs to be like he needs people to be pissed off about it. Yeah, because that is. Look, I remember when American Psycho, the book came out, people were pissed off about it. And, you know, and he loves it. They said that like, he was a murderer off. and all this other shit and blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah. Uh, that, that article too was fascinating that I read last night where he was, he was going back to revisit American psycho in his career. And he goes, you know, the book, I thought the book was great. And, um, cause sometimes, you know, as a writer, you go back and look at shit that you've written and say, maybe I could have done better. Um, right. or, or maybe this was my best or whatever it was. Right. Um, when they were talking about American psycho with him, I was surprised at how honest he was of, uh, the movie. Um, cause usually look, adapting a book into a movie is, it's hard, man. Everybody says the same thing of like, I like the book better. It's, it's a, it's almost a no win situation right? where he was like, look, it, it was this perfect mix of right time, right place, right book, right person. He goes, look, Christian Bale, like how, how do you get so lucky as to have Christian Bale, play the lead in your movie who then becomes, you know, yeah. to go on to be one of the greatest actors of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you get people that, you know, cult wise to love it? Like, um, and just love it as all... much as the book mm-hmm. where he was just like, man, people love that film as much as the book. Mm-hmm. And then he was talking about the meme culture and he goes, there isn't a day that goes by that. I don't see a Patrick Bateman meme of Christian Bale from the movie. And he's yeah. like, it just keeps living. And he goes, it's, it's great. I love all of it. There was a, there's a Broadway play like, Oh yeah. So it just keeps going. It, yeah. it just keeps going. And it's one of those things where, uh, uh, it was cool to see someone recognize what has happened and the success behind other stuff. Because I mean, look, you could go, you could peel this back to the eighties from less than zero. And, and mm-hmm. you know, you do that, you do that movie. You can call it a day from that. Cause that movie was great. The book is great. You could call it a day after that, but the fact that he just kept going, I mean, even Rules of Attraction to me. Yeah. Um, I still didn't like Vanderbeek in that movie, but... Uh, I don't know. I liked it. I, I, I liked the film. I just wish it was someone else other than Vanderbeek. You know? Yeah. I, I just... That was too much of a stretch for that. Uh, but the rest of it was great. I mean, yeah. fuck, what a great, great movie. Uh, you know? I just, Vanderbeek is one of those people who, they keep he's famous for being James in. Vanderbeek. Yeah, and they keep plugging him in places and you're like. And it's not that I think he's a terrible actor. It's just, he's James Vanderbeek. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's very Stamos to me. Where Yeah, you're Stamos. John Stamos is Stamos. And it's like, all right, cool. Remember we, he popped up in you. And yeah. And we were like, dude, it's Stamos. It's like, Stamos and you, you know, you're almost. It, he is a caricature of himself, so you're kind of like you can't play 
other people now. It, yeah, it takes you out of it You've because already you're already become, too famous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the way I felt about that, and that's the that's my only gripe with that. But that at movie. that time, it wasn't like that. So watching it at the time that it came out, Vanderbeek worked. Yeah. Looking back on it, I bet you're like eh, Vanderbeek, but at the time, it for me. Yeah. It worked because uh, he wasn't Vanderbeek yet. I auditioned for that movie, by the way. Uh, I did a screen test for it, and uh, I originally did it for Victor, and that mm-hmm. was man, that would have been the end all be all, by the oh. way, because uh, they they really did travel to Europe and shoot that whole sequence oh, yeah. and all that shit. Yes, I was coming off the new guy; he was coming off Remember the Titans, uh, mm-hmm. and it was a a no brainer, I'm sure for them. Like they right. took, uh, I, I fuck, I can't even remember his name. Kit Pardue, that's his name. Um, and then, so they were like, hey man, your read was great. Let's slide you over in this other character. And it was the gimpy best friend who's, hey, can you give me Coke? Yeah, can yeah, Can you give yeah, me Coke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they, they had said, look, we had an offer out to the kid from American Pie who, who right. eventually ended up doing it. And they were like, he's shooting something else and he can't get back in time. So how about we slide you into this? And I was like, all right, cool. But I also didn't want to play the Gimpy Coke guy, like, because right. I thought it could be a big movie. Like, that was one of my favorite scripts that I had ever read. Yeah, and I thought it could be a really big movie. And at the time, no one was sure whether or not Bateman or uh, uh, Christian Bale was going to make a cameo and come back. Because remember, oh, on the oh, phone, oh, he's on the yeah, phone yeah, with yeah. his brother, and it, uh, Vanderbeek's on the phone yeah. with his brother. There was the rumor around town. And, and amongst agents in Hollywood was that he was going to come back and make a cameo in this mm-hmm. to make a clean transition and, and possibly do another movie after that. Right. Right. And I was like, Oh shit, this would be awesome. So I was like, man, I kind of, and then, uh, at the nth hour homeboy was like, I-, I can come back and make this movie. That was one of the ones I was grateful though, to not get, because when I saw it, he was just that gimpy guy. It's my, I'm just trying to get coke with my girlfriend, man. I'm like, coke with my girlfriend. And yeah, he was like, yeah, oh, yeah. you don't want to be known as that. Mm, yeah. Hey, are you the coke from my girlfriend guy? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, because that movie still lives today where it's just like, it's awesome. I'm a big, I'm still a big fan of Rules of Attraction. Oh, dude. Uh, Jessica Biel was in that movie. She was. Bealster was in it. Girl, oh, dude. Brand. Crushing it in that movie, too. Uh, that was at her height. zenith. That was the hottest she's ever height. been. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bealster was in it. Um, there, was a, there was a bunch of other like cool, rad people. Uh, Clifton Collins Jr. was in that as the, the drug dealer. Like, yeah. A it fun was movie. So good. But I, I could harp on about Brady Sinalis' shit forever. I just, he's one of those. He, he look. He's one of very few writers who's been able to have great films out of great books. Yeah, it just doesn't happen very often, at all. No. Um, and, and you've wonder... got to be stoked when it works as a writer. the The hard thing about mine is it's me. Like the, is, you know, whoever is listening to the audiobooks of The Night She Cries or When Darkness Falls, it's me. I, who's gonna come in and do that? Like you know. If I get too old and I can't do this shit anymore, like play these characters and somebody wants to buy them, I'll obviously sell them because we're horse for money. But um, Sure. No, but uh, it would have to be, you know, I'd have to be probably 60. I got I get a long ways, yeah, to got give, it, to give up that, that character. Got it. But even then, it. I'd probably watch and be like, man, fuck you guys. You know? <laughs> yeah. Whereas Brad Easton Ellis, who gets that lucky? Because once you sign over these rights, and this is for anybody at yeah, home. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is how yeah, much did he have? So let me, let me tell you for the people at home. and this Because not, not a lot of people know this. If you have a massive franchise already, like Fifty Shades of Grey, or because like three of those were written before the series was bought, right? Um, so you know you're making three of those. Or Harry Potter, all of those Harry Potter books were written, most of them before they ended up selling it as a series. Then you have more power because it's a it's a it's a series of books, and you can say, all right, I want casting choices, I want this, and you know I want to know who the screenwriter is and all this other shit. If you write a one off book, just one, you wrote some. Weird, like less than zero, right? Let's take let's take that for an example. That was Brad Easton Ellis's first book. Let, let's say you're you're a less than zero guy that got made into a movie. Um, you have no rights. Yeah, none. You you sign off those rights, and they say they give you a check, a huge advance, and they say thanks for playing. Mm-hmm. Go home if you'd like to come visit set. Great, uh, but we don't want your input. Need it. Blah blah blah. Yep. 
And then they'll put on a, a screenwriter. The studio will hire a screenwriter that is not of your choosing. You hope it's great. And then, then you've got to go through casting and all that other stuff. Right. And, um, you know, a buddy of mine is going through it right now. Uh, look, he was in Range 15. He's been on the show. Uh, uh, Clint Romache. Oh, uh, right. He sold his, uh, the, the, the life rights to his book to Clooney's company. Okay. So they're going through yeah. writers and casting and all this other stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy process. I'm sure Clooney's company will. He is. And, and they're, look, he's in on a lot you of know, it. And I'm sure Brett Easton Ellis like, picked who he sold it to. Yeah. And so well, you, you I, not you the just, first one. The first one, you're just selling it. And it's just like, all right, cool. Here's a ton of money for your book. Yeah. You don't know what's going on. Right. And, you know, I met with... Um, all those companies, what was it, last year, the year before for film rights for, for Matt's book. Right. And, uh, you know, you go around, you take all these meetings and everything else. And the first question is, have you had a book made into a movie? Obviously, no. And, you know, as so that checklist starts to go down. Yeah. yeah. And I told Matt walking out of the, the, one of the meetings, I was like, you realize it's probably going to be like Sean William Scott playing you in a movie. That's yeah. what's going to have. It's going to be <laughs> and stifler. And you won't have anything to do or say about no. it. No. They'll probably bring you on as a tech advisor, you know. Oh, sure. How are you holding your gun in this scene? Oh, that, sure, that type yeah. of vibe. Make but, you feel like you're part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but really, everything gets slowly gets taken away from you and you're making the movie you want to make. Um, I mean, look, Marcus Luttrell is a great example. Like, Mark Wahlberg looks nothing like Marcus Luttrell. Yeah, but that's who you 100% want. 100% polar opposite of that's Marcus Luttrell. That's who you Luttrell. want to play. You. You're like... Okay. Yeah, but, but you know, Mark Wahlberg is five six or five seven, and then right. you know he's got a thick Boston accent. Marcus Luttrell, by the way, is every bit of the man you think he is. He is fucking six three, sure, six four, and I mean, thick. When accent, he shakes your hand, yeah. it, it goes through your entire body. Where you feel right. it in your groin, where you're just like, whoa, this is a man. This sure. is a man right here. Right. Thick accent, Texas. Uh, you know, not not the. Totally different. We made a joke about it in Range 15. Right. But uh, yeah, that's that's what, what kind of control you have where you're just like, all right, cool. Because I guarantee you the studio came in and said, look, Mark Wahlberg will sell this movie around the uh, around the world. We're getting Mark Wahlberg, you know? Yep. We're getting Marky Mark on this. Mm-hmm. And if we can get the funky bunch, great. We'll, we'll dress them up as soldiers too. But uh, that's uh, that's kind of how the, the, the gig works. So, um, you know. For Madonna, who's back, that's kind of how her gig works too, you know? Mm. She's just kind of putting things out there, and I think people are controlling her now at this point. Did you hear that weird song yesterday? No. The fuck? Man, it's weird. Her new song? Yeah. Half of it's in Spanish. Uh, I know. It's like kind of a woman lost in the, you know, the islands type of vibe where you're just like, Mm -mm. you know, she's 60 now. Yeah, we're good. I think, I think we're, we're all done with Madonna. I mean, good, good on her. She's She's put a new album out. And she's not all done. And that is great. And there is a huge group of gay guys that will continue to (laughs) listen, rage, remix, all of those. Um, I want to talk about the Columbine girl because this scared me and I'll tell you why. Fuck man. I saw this story and I didn't under, I look, I, for real, I went like deep down a rabbit hole and like read it to find out about this shit last night. You tell me what you heard and then I'll tell you what I found out last night. This scared me initially because she was obsessed with Columbine. Columbine. Yep. And it's the 20, it was the 20th anniversary yesterday. Right. Yep. Um, this made me think of all the things that like I've been obsessed with either murder wise, cult wise, mm-hmm. right? And what if I'm traveling somewhere and like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of like is this being misconstrued or is this real? Cuz she looked fairly normal uh, in the pictures as you go on, no, but in yeah. the pictures you're like, okay. I mean, normal lady, girl that would be into murder, mm-hmm. you know? Lonely cats, glasses. Yes. Cute, whatever. Um, That's the debatable on the cute part, but sure. Continue. Look, she didn't have crazy eyes. I'll allow it. She looked like, you know, yeah. a gal. Yeah. Just a gal. And happened to be going to Colorado. 
So it did unfold, but initially I was like, she bought a gun too. She bought a gun and ended up, you know, and ammo and all that. Yeah, other yeah, stuff. yeah. So they yeah. put out for the audience if you don't know the story, they put out an, an alert. They shut all the schools down in Colorado yesterday, which has got to be by terrifying the way, for parents and do children. Do anyways on the anniversary, right? I don't know. I, I, do it. Why not? You're you're trying to get over things and everything else and blah blah blah. Sure, it's a tough one for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Because I say carry on with with life and okay. try not to to let that consume you, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. my personal opinion. You're right. You're right. Uh, but when I went down the rabbit hole of this whole subculture, which this is this is a subculture that are called Columbiners, mm-hmm. and they're obsessed with Columbine. They do like art pieces of like that Dylan Klebold or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck his name is, and and all that stuff. And they 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 go to the school. You know, they physically go to the school and take pictures like it's, uh, you know, like, like they're going to Graceland. Um, I did not know any of this. Okay. And so as I got deeper into this, there is a whole segment of these people who worship these two fucked up trench coat wearing kids who shot up to school and they look at them as like who are assholes, cult by heroes. The way. Yeah, they're dicks. They weren't nerds that got picked on. No, they were just dicks. They were dicks and they were assholes. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, but they're obsessed with these weird, you know, people in pop culture Mm -hmm. that it's like, all all right, you know, they're making paintings and artwork and having meetups to talk about Columbine and share stories. And And I think for the most part, it's kind of like how I am with murder for the most part. It's just a fascination and. You know, there's so many parts to the story and the conspiracies and the things and the things. Right. Um, I think for the most part, but in anything like that, you can get there's the there's the exceptions. There's the crazies. There's the people that will take it farther than the pictures or whatever. Right. So that's yeah. the danger. And then it made me also think, you know, there's these murderinos. They're called like murderinos. What that is that? People, ladies that are into murder. Mm right yeah. have meetups listen to podcasts go to the live shows James. and like show that right i'm You're not saying i'm not but i'm not in it i'm not as crazy about it cultish about it but there's i could see very easily someone finding that as their community and having some kind of other issues and latching onto it in a different way ah. so it is a danger of making this this Murder, culture, entertainment. And I know it's a slippery slope. I do. I'm still fascinated with all of it. I'll still listen to all the, you know, the uh, crimes, the whatever, the files, forensic files, all of it. Yeah. Um. I'll still do that, but I do know, and even listening to the 911 calls and stuff, like I do know it's a slippery slope. And I do know that if I was even a little bit hair crazy, right? Or had a, right. a, a one screw loose, that I could take it in a different direction, as did this person, right? So she was a part of a group yeah. that could be harmless ladies that, you know, don't have a lot going on and want to meet up and talk about Columbine right. and they have their notes and they feel like they're doing something and it's fun to talk about. And then there's someone like this. Yeah. And, it, you know, the hard part for me, and this is what, you know, I, and this is since having kids and like, is now you're. I think you're going to be worried about anybody showing up to a school, mm-hmm. um, you know, parents or otherwise, because this, this woman looked like a parent. Yeah. She could have just rolled up and nobody would have known. That's what I mean. Is I know. That just and, normal. I go. Yeah. The, and the other thing is, is like, I remember uh, going back for a, like a, a reunion, high school reunion. Right. And that day, cause I hadn't been back to my, that state in a while. I didn't back back to Georgia or the high school in a while. And I, you know, I rolled up and, uh, uh, just take some pictures outside the school, you know, some selfies like, hey, sure. Yeah. Go back again. Yeah. Whatever. Ten years, whatever it was. And um, uh, I look at it now of like, man, if there was a security guard out in the parking lot or whatever, I, you, I'd probably get stopped today where it's just like, hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. What is a grown ass yes. man doing yes. outside yes. of a high school? Yes. Taking pictures of mm-hmm. stuff like it's weird, man. And I hate that this is a 
happening. I hate that this is a part of our culture. I hate that there's people out there like this. I hate that people don't recognize how fucked up and crazy that they are for worshiping people like this. That's, that's what's insane to me. Yeah. Where it's just like, man, if that's what your thing is, I just don't understand it. Like even like, like I know every white woman in America loves Mm -hmm. like murder shows and Mm -hmm. podcasts and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. Right. If you started focusing in on one in particular, you know, that you were just, Hey, I want to go see that. I would be like, yeah, that's a little weird. Japes. Yeah. Maybe you should put the, put the knife down. We're just having, we're having wine and cheese tonight. The but one, that you know, the one down. that I will always watch the documentary, I will always think was with Jonestown, right? Yeah, yeah, But Jim I think Jones. that's more of a, I'm just so, how does it get to that but point? But you won't listen to the audio. No, not of, no, no. Not of him telling the people, of the people drinking, yeah. of hearing the kids crying. I won't do that, right? I, I did. I listened to that audio. Yeah, you're different. You've got an issue. No, <laughs> and, um, I, that's the weird thing no, is, I is I don't, and I don't have a fascination with no, murders no, or serial no, killers no. Or, or all that stuff. Um, uh, just because it, it doesn't really, I always look at these people as fucked up or weird or whatever. And it's just like, eh. so I don't know if we said what the story was, but this lady comes from where? So this chick who uh, like appears to be a grown ass woman. Right. Isn't. Yeah. Just a just a teenager, just your typical eighteen, but yeah, meth meth lady from, but it's Florida, it's Florida, right? So that's a different wrinkle in it, you know, mm-hmm. where it's just like, all right, mm-hmm. now you know, you're a you're a Florida woman, you know, right? That you're adds Miami, a different but yeah. level of crazy. You're still in that state of Florida, yeah. and th- then you're rolling up there, you know, as a teenager. 18 years old, Mm -hmm. you look like you're one of the kids. Right. Fuck, man. How does that happen? Why do you go there is my question. Because she bought a a pump action shotgun. And then what did you did? She she killed herself. She killed herself. So she she went down there, got the gun. Then they, you know, they started the investigation Uh and closed in on her. So she never went to the school. She never Ah, did anything. Gotcha. 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 I, I guess they think that was her plan just because of what she was saying Mm -hmm. on Facebook and she was obsessed and all of this and it's the 20 year anniversary and so she's traveling there buys the gun shoots herself I don't know what her plan was all along right right was she that obsessed that she wanted to go there and kill herself there or did she really want to do something and they cut it off at the at the pass I hope that Uh. they cut off something that was going to happen. Um, but either way, really weird. Strange. This gal to be that obsessed to go to Colorado. I, you know, yeah. I don't, I, I'm not a fan of any of it. And, uh, I, look, you keep glorifying it in the press and the media and all this shit. Like it's just going to make more people do it. The Rolling Stone thing still really sticks in my craw where they put that asshole from the, the Boston bombing. From the marathon. Oh, yeah. They put him on the cover of Rolling Stone. Yeah. And they're still, I mean, that getting heat guy. for that. But yeah. Yeah. Because um, you don't, and looking, you know, kind of cool, like, yeah, I, it, I don't it, know. It was like he was in a fucking boy band. Yeah. Um, weird. The other weird thing about that guy is, is you notice you've never heard a word out of him ever since? Out of? The guy. That, that Boston Bomber kid. Right. What, what happened with that? What would you hear? He him in court, in, yeah, right. Him in court, just talking about you know, like, I, unless he pled guilty to all that shit, I guess. But like, right. no interview, no nothing, no. Even the who is it, the Menendez brothers? You heard, you know, right? They're doing phone calls from prison oh, and shit like married, that. Married, uh, all of that. One would think somebody would have gotten a hold of this kid press wise. Um, yeah, but I've never heard this kid speak. Mm-mm. That that's fueled a couple conspiracies. Um, really. Yeah, where it's just like, hey, what was this fucking Middle Eastern kid doing and, and all this other shit? But I look, I know nothing about him. That was one of the craziest fucking times in the news I've ever seen. But Oh, yeah. Man. Uh, before we get out of here, anybody watching the video show, Jabes? Because, yes. it's, again, we already did the, the revolutionary figure of the day at the top. At Shea the top. Giles. I'll miss that Coke era that I was never part of. You want to tell the audience what you're wearing on your right wrist? Because it looks like a... a an 80s bracelet. It's a, bu- it's a bug off bracelet. Not to brag, I get bitten up. 
You know, not to brag, I'm real finicky. <laughs> okay. A little bit of sweat and the no seams are all over me. Yeah. Everyone else seems to be fine. And I'm just, I mean, they eat me up. The, and I, I, but you're wearing it inside the studio, which I find is, is odd. I like the smell. I like the bug smell. Mm. Makes me feel comforted. Gotcha. Summer is here. You know? It is, yeah. That yeah, yeah. smell of the bug spray to me. Is, is in the air. Summer is here. It makes me feel like summer is here. You bet it does. You bet it does. Summer is here, Javes. Let's get out of here. Let's go party for, with Jay Giles today. Let's do it. Let's just take the rest of the afternoon off. Please. You know? Please. Grandparents are here. Maybe they'll watch the kids. You and I can pound back some, some whiskey sours. Come home wasted yeah, for fine. bath time. Find some you know bar manager at Sea Witch who's just like, hey, man. Loose, fast and loose. Yeah, you need a bumper. Mm, mm. What do you what do you get? What are you guys getting into today? Anything heavy? Sure. Anything heavy? Uh here's a hanger, because you're gonna be wearing this out later. You know? Wearing this out on the town. For Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.